So, so do you consider them friends? Wow, what a dangerous question. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, heart is about to be broken here. <laughs>episode of Sit Back with Sonia where we completely overshare and dish out hot takes and brutal life lessons. At the end of it all, we're going to actually make a drink based on my guest's personality which always gets very interesting. Are you ready? Let's go. Today, we've got three very special VIPs joining me from one of Singapore's biggest podcasts of the moment. I was also quite big, but they're also equally big, if not bigger, to be honest. Really, millions of views right now. Please, invite to the set from The Daily Catch-Up, we've got Denise, Dan and John Paul. Hey, hey, welcome. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello, hi. How interesting is it that you're here with a live audience? Have you ever done anything like this before? I'm very nervous. <laughs> Please, come on, really? It's very strange because your first two guests are like international celebrities and then we are like small-time podcasters. No, man, I gotta say, you guys have interviewed international celebrities as well and you're still doing that. But we're on the flip side now. Yeah, how does that feel? Very strange. We have no idea what to talk about. <laughs> yeah. The fear is that we might answer you with a question and start That's interviewing fine. you instead. That's honestly okay. Okay. I'm happy to answer questions as well, okay? Oh, okay. Well, Congratulations on your success. Um, you know, millions of views in the last few years as well. How does that make you feel in this moment? Like building something from scratch and like just owning it. So we only realised that we had as many views when I did the pre prepod for the year-end episode. So that's when I kind of went back and like tabulated our score from the year. And then I was like, whoa! So I was shocked. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I think it is news to us actually. But I think it's something that we are proud to have done. Okay, before we get started, um, we just want to do a little test on how well you know each other. Mm. Oh! Okay. You spend so much time together, right? <laughs> As colleagues and friends? Mm. Come on, firm fail this test. So it's a little telepathy game. What's going to happen is, why, why are you laughing then? Why are you really laughing? I know it's going to be so bad, but let's do it. You know what, let's go. So what's going to happen is, each one of you are going to take turns to stand right here in the middle. And you're not going to be able to see or hear what your other two friends or colleagues are okay. talking about, okay? <laughs> Your friend. So, I'm going to ask you a question and we'll see if whether the answer of the individual in front and the two behind match. Mm. So, if it matches, means we are friends? Yes. That means you're in sync. We can do this <laughs> lah. I, Come think, on. I think we can But la. no eye contact, no like communication, nothing. I'm very disturbed by the fact that you decided to wear shorts. I can see your legs actually. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> you know what? Now you make me look. So I... <laughs> <laughs> no, so no, please, hey, camera, please. Look, point up, point up. Up. <laughs> Stop. Okay. Look up here. I'm kidding. Okay. Alright, who wants to go first? Sure. Okay. I will go. Yes. Come on. Here we Woo, go. We believe in you. I think this is really fitting that you decided to go first. Who in TDK will you save? If the building is burning. What easy you, answer. You are easy. Yeah. What an easy answer. Easy. He's thinking really hard. I'm actually quite surprised. Okay, five. I must pretend four, like I'm writing longer a bit. <laughs> three. Okay. Two. One. Okay, time's up. Denise first. Denise first. Okay, I vote that you save me. Oh, very confident. Uh, it has to be John. No way. Jonathan Chua. No way. Really, you like John more than me? <laughs> Alright, show it to the camera right now. It is John. <laughs> I need to make money after this, yeah. How? Everything burned down already. Hold on, Denise, do you feel hurt about this? No. <laughs> it's okay, we'll make up after this. We'll make up, right? Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> have I'm a done. seat, have a seat. Denise, you're up. Got points, I know. I think I'm winning. You're up, you're up. As the peacekeeper, who will you cancel from the hosts of TDK? Who would you cancel? I'm just gonna say, she drew a J, I think. Three, <laughs> two, one. Okay. Dan, I want to hear yours. I think she would pick me. I don't know, I just it, it's just my inner insecurities. Wow, that's such a sad answer. But we'll <laughs> stick with it, we'll stick with it. Okay, JP, what about you? Dan lah. He's quite obvious. <laughs> he's, he sucks. Let's see he whether the Denise show. surprises us more. Let's have the answer. It is... Jared, Jared actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Since it's completely different, they were quite unanimous no, in yeah. their decision. The part where you put Jared and everyone started clapping like, yeah, Jared. <laughs> Hi, Jared. Last but not least. Hey, these questions are tough. What about Dan? Oh, no. Annoys his wife the most. Oh. Lack of self-awareness. No, you can't say your answer. <laughs> Don't worry, I have many. Okay, 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 okay I'm okay. done. Dan's moustache. Mm. He has a moustache? Exactly. Oh. <laughs> 
the lack thereof. The lack thereof. <laughs> Any answers? Any answers? Maybe it's the fact that he does actually overshare a bit too much on the show. Oh. I think I need to change my answer. Wait, 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 you can't change your answer right now. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. It's such a lame answer, Can but I, I was going to say, yeah. When I speak or sing too loudly was the answer. Yeah. Exactly. But now, upon hearing John Paul's answer, I think it's actually that. John Paul knows your wife so well. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Whoa. Wait, 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 this is a different kind of show now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, you Thank guys, you. for close doing enough. a little game of telepathy. We'll go away close enough. So are we officially friends? I don't know, you tell me later on. This is what we need to find out. Okay, so on that note, you all said, you know, before this, you didn't really know each other that well on a personal level. So how did this show even come about? Like, how did you birth it? I, I think it was during COVID when the first iteration of this show appeared and it was basically just Dan in his bedroom telling people the news. I think I joined the company. Shout out to uh, Mr. Jonathan Chua, the fourth member. Wow, he really the loves John. Member. The first member. Yeah. I think we were also looking for like what was a show that we can craft. They would check the lines of like topics that are more taboo yeah, and also looking at like what is the demand of like the Singaporean audience at the moment. We were exploring a podcast already as a concept because in Singapore, I think in the media space, there wasn't a podcast at the moment. We tried like two or three different concepts. It didn't quite work. Either the chemistry of the talents didn't quite work. And then uh, John sometimes like to take credit for it. But I think if you look at the messages in the group chat, it was me who suggested oh. why don't the four of us try to do the podcast together uh -huh. and then it stuck. But when you guys got together, did you have any obstacles or issues with each other, personal or work-wise? Spicy question. Sexual tension, I think. Oh, uh, loads. Between you guys? <laughs> just me and Dan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why we have to separate yeah. ourselves with ah, Dan. Okay, okay. You see, the way he looks at me now, it's scary. I think it's quite genuine, actually. I, see, <laughs> I feel the connection. I feel the chemistry. That's why I wash shots. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, no, for real, like any other... <laughs> Any other obstacles or there was none? It was very smooth sailing. At that point, John had done real talk. Then he came from another show also. Yeah. And Dan had been alone talking in his bedroom for a long while. But it was Still pretty do. much my first time trying to hold something. So if you go back and see, I think for the first five episodes, maybe I never talked. Uh. <laughs> so, Wait, was it like from a bit of fear or...? You I think it's just weave in. when there are multiple people talking, you just have to kind of find your gap and go and believe that whatever you are saying right, has value. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And that's something I was very unsure about, especially right from the start. Yeah. But now you're everyone's favourite. Whenever like, we put Thank out you. anything about like who's your favourite host, it's, yeah, Denise is always you, like, the number one. Yeah, you most voted, answer. like most liked or something like that? Yes, most based on the poll that I conducted. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> like I think with everybody, right, when you, when you just start out on camera, it takes time to warm up and different people, they go at their own pace, right? So what we did was that we were establishing like roles for, for the four individuals mm. to make sure that everybody had a space that they honed on during every episode. Yeah, that's why like in the early stages, we were trying to develop her as a host. So at first it used to be Dan. Then to give me more screen time in a sense, mm -hmm. that kind of got passed on to me so that I got more naturally into the flow of talking. So this is like a Blackpink situation in a band. Like you're assigned the roles, but it moves around sometimes. 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 You gotta keep it fresh. And I also don't want to compare us to Blackpink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No way. No way. No way. <laughs> On that note, we got a question coming in from the audience right now. How much of your brainstorming sessions are based on trends? And how much are what you're truly passionate about? Wow. I, I think it's a good balance of the two because a lot of the times, right, just because something is trending, uh, doesn't mean we will just hop on it mm. for the sake of. We still want to figure out what is that deeper conversation that brings value to the audience and to us as well. Especially when it comes to like huge like scandals or political news or whatever. Almost everything that needs to be said is usually already happening in the forums and online and on the social media platforms. So I think for us, is, is there another take that we can kind of introduce into the public sphere that no one's thinking about? Can we introduce a guest that maybe no one expected to kind of like come onto the show to, to tell us what that point of view is? No, I actually admire that because um, from my point of view, my main day job, I host a radio program and we have to be so careful about the things that we say and the people we invite it goes through like multiple levels of approvals you mm. know so I, I'm not sure what your approval process is like <laughs> you're just like yeah okay on let's go kind it's, of thing it's <laughs> retrospective <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. so, Post first, oh. do first thing later <laughs> kind of situation I feel you, I feel you. It is challenging because when it comes to like sensitive topics, it, it makes me feel a bit worried sometimes. Do you guys ever feel worried about getting cancelled? At, at least for me personally, I, I had that fear. But as we started exploring topics that really told the line, and then when we noticed that the comment section was actually very open to some of our ideas, I think our first episode was about checking your sperm. And then um, 
exploring the, the ideas of incest and like how wrong is it really. You think if after you say this we get cancelled? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe people think it's based on like real life experience. Like, yeah. Wait, what? Oh, that's quite dangerous. But you know what? We're in too deep. No pun intended, sorry. I was told this is a family show. I was told that too. Oh, really? But no one told me it was a family <laughs> show. <Sorry. laughs> but yeah, when I, when we realised, like, we put out those episodes and then the comment section, we, we thought, oh, people are going to be like, oh, you can't talk about these things. But actually, people were like, oh yeah, that's a good point. And then we got worried about our society. Yeah. <laughs> Faith in humanity declined. Okay, just to stir the pot a little bit, was there ever a guess or a topic so challenging and sensitive that you almost didn't air the episode. Almost didn't air. One person comes to mind. Ooh. Huh? So this is how we know that he's on a different scale when it comes to controversial topics. Oh. Yeah, so John Paul, John Paul, like, Denise His and I, we have, we have the line, and I think yes. the line is quite in line with everyone else's. Okay. John Paul's line is very, very it's far down far. the road. Fine. There's no line sometimes. There shouldn't be a line. <laughs> there shouldn't be a line. <laughs> There shouldn't be a line. I, I think I know who you're talking about. Already. So we obviously did a, a, a presidential series and we had all four candidates onto the show and I think one of them is a little bit more controversial than the other. But even then, right, I, I feel like the whole point of the show is to, to be somewhat of an honest reflection mm. of, of what, what reality looks like. So that's why I would never believe that we would ever have been close to not publishing a video. I think we were worried about the kind of information that we would put out, right? And people that would just take that at face value and run with it. But that's the thing. Sometimes you cannot control what people take out of context. Mm. Yeah. A lot of exactly. the time. Exactly. Exactly. For JP, you are obviously one of the most controversial hosts. He doesn't realise it, which is he even more scary. That's the thing. Cause, and you know, your colleagues are saying, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You really told the non-existent line in your, <laughs> in your mind. So is this the real you? Or is it the character that you put on for the daily catch-up? Wow, what a dangerous question. <laughs> no, you can be real. Okay, look, for me, like, as a personality, as an artist, because I'm not in the acting space, for example, I'm a terrible actress, to be very honest. No la. I'm the best at, you're just saying it. Wait till you see my show. You're a terrible actor. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like I'm the best just being myself, like, in this kind of setting and, and so on. But I can understand that in some programs, you also have to take on certain personas. So for you, is that really mostly you? I think for all of the cast members, we all bring forth an exaggerated version to show certain sides of ourselves. The moment I'm on set, I'm there just to have fun. And, and fun sometimes looks like me pushing the boundaries of a, of, a, of a certain topic, of a subject matter. It's so weird that you're giving very serious answers. Hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. What you want me to talk? What you want me to say? He put on the specs that he is. Yeah. <laughs> no, so like, the only thing I will add is probably like, maybe not so much a character, but I mm. think when we look at certain topics, I think we're always very conscious to make sure that we have certain stances that maybe might not agree with one another, just so that we can have a conversation. Yeah. Um, so I think that's quite important. But with JP in particular, he, he's very obsessed about having different characters. Like, he will suddenly put on glasses, so that he can appear intellectual. Are they real? <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's any lenses in there. There isn't? There's I lens, was this close to sticking my finger in. I was like, I need to find out whether there's a lens in there. I, I'm loving the energy here. I mean, you guys really seem like really tight, real friends. When you started out, <laughs> not, not so much the case, but you do attribute a lot of the success of your show to the chemistry between you guys. So would you say like that is the secret sauce to your entire success of your show? I think we were very lucky because I don't think we knew what the secret sauce was before we actually started producing it. I think we had a hunch. On the other hand, it's also like the fact that we do our jobs and we understand the algorithm and what works with our audiences and what are say trends to catch. Yeah. Yeah. So I think riding on that and being able to capitalize on that, I think was the more essential part. Yeah. But but I also think that when we did the first pilot, right? Like the filming of the first pilot, the moment like we cut we felt, we already knew that the show would work. And I, I can't describe the feeling. And after that, it was just a matter of refining the product yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But also, like Denise mentioned, the ideation. I don't know how much of it is the chemistry because when we tried to do vlogs, I think there is a, <laughs> there's a varied uh, performance when it comes to, <laughs> to different formats. But for some reason, that chemistry in a podcast format with the topics that we do somehow works in yeah. that combination. So it wasn't like you guys bonded over, you know, a mutual hate for your boss or something, you know, just <laughs> staring. What was yeah. specific? <laughs> because a lot of people that I know like a lot of my friends back then the reason why we bonded and got along in the first place was because we were going through some like bad shit in the office right i'm just gonna go quickly to the audience right now do you feel like at the workplace you've bonded with a colleague over problems at work let's see yes or no actually we've got quite a lot of yeses everybody that wants a promotion right need to 
change your answer right now. So it is true, like there's a lot of instances where people actually bond over problems at work. So has that ever been the case for you? Usually we bond over our love of John. Yeah, he's such a How great How much bond. is he paying you guys? Like, I mean, like, <laughs> we actually got together and was like, this was our opportunity to shit on John. But for some reason, we're complimenting him more than anything. Huh, did you say that? Wow, you're going to throw me under the bus now. Okay. <laughs> so that was my final appearance on the show. <laughs> Thank Don't you so much. <laughs> See you never. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. People don't believe us when we tell them that we don't spend any time together outside of the office. You don't? We, yeah. we, we don't at all. Like today, I, so I picked up John Paul to come to the studio okay. here. That was the longest time we spent together in the car. And he charged me $11. Oh my god. That's great premium right there. Personally, I think Joakim and I don't spend that much time together outside as well because we see each other every single day. Oh. I'm telling you this, when I go on holidays, you know, and then someone at the customs recognizes me or whatever, they're like, Hey, where's Joakim? I'm like, are we supposed to be traveling together? When we go to a, we go to a restaurant, he goes to Hai Ti Lao alone. Wait, where's Sonia? Like, people think that we spend every waking hour together. Wait, sorry. Joakim goes to Hai Di Lao alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, he publicizes it on Instagram, so it's not a secret. Fair enough. He wasn't fair hiding enough. it. She was scared for? for a moment that she really threw him under the bus. <laughs> I was like, yeah. wait, <laughs> this video can edit or not? Or <laughs> how did the two of you mourn? Suddenly I'm being interviewed. I don't know what happened. But in a radio partnership, it's like a marriage. Like, sometimes arranged marriage. You know, you're not even expecting to be I was just Polly and Marie at this point. Yeah, yeah, we exactly. Got like, we got eight. By the way, we also have an episode on men explain about this. So if you ever want to revisit that, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so, so we just really wanted to make it work. Because we're both very competitive people and we're like, okay, we have to somehow make this show good. And we managed to work out our differences. Which you will see on our episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To plug out. On that note, another quick audience interaction here. Do you think work friends are real friends? Let's see, yes or no? There's one girl that's like, I'm not sure. Why you half half one? We pressure her into giving a no. <laughs> you know, I think people have different opinions about workplace friendships. So when you guys walked in earlier, we asked you to fill in a card and place it in an envelope. <laughs> I forgot about that. But I need, I need the audience's help with this, okay? So you're going to have to vote like who you think this answer matters to. Uh, the question is actually about unpopular opinions about workplace friendships. Sometimes, it helps to sleep with your supervisor. Who wrote this? Oh my god. Let's vote. Wow, they're very serious, you know. They're yeah. actually really voting right now. Thank you right guys now. for taking us seriously. So, the polls are in. Ooh. 89% of our audience members said John Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who didn't did say John Paul. <laughs> Wait, so, is it true? Don't yes, that is my answer. See? <laughs> Why would they vote for me? I work for Jonathan Chua. Exactly. Okay, like, I can see you all. <laughs> you all have good taste as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Give them a round of applause for that. I think they were stressing out a little bit over their answer. Okay, after all of that, you know, we're still on the topic of friendship and all. I think, uh, Dan, you were actually saying how sometimes when colleagues leave, we think about whether we can still maintain a friendship with them mm. after. I think it's very strange because the friendships that you make with colleagues are ones where like you, you literally spend almost every waking hour of a weekday like right. from 9 to 6 together and so yeah. then when a friendship is based off that proximity and that time spent I think it's very strange to suddenly then transition to one where you are forced to say hey do you want to hang out? I feel like my gauge kind of starts from do you talk about things outside of work? Yeah. I did have a very tight-knit group in the office. At that point in time, I felt like, ah, we must be really close for us to be able to go out for dinner so often. Something that my partner after that pointed out was that, eh, how come every time you all go out, you are talking about work? That was when I realised that, oh shit, we are gossiping. But don't you think this is a bit unavoidable, like in a workplace? Everybody gossips, right? Spill the tea, it's yeah. fine. I don't know, like when people go for like meals or like smoke break or drink or whatever, you, you're going to talk about someone. That's for No, sure. but you realise when it gets... Toxic. Yes. We were bringing up past incidents to like poke fun instead of just something that just happened and then we are saying ah we should have been done like that. It did like kind of blow up in my face right. Then I think it was really a sobering moment for me lah because I didn't think this was the type of person that I was especially at work. And actually John Paul was very kind to call it out a few times or so oh. in like wow. meetings that we've had like one on one. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no but I feel like that's also a mark of friendship because you're able to be honest with each other without being mad at the person for telling you that. But when it comes to like maintaining a friendship between a superior and a subordinate, that's also a very 
different thing altogether. Uh, John Paul, do you want to jump in on this? Funny you should ask that because John Paul is the Nisa supervisor. Yeah, right? I figured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My direct supervisor. True that. So let's talk about that. And it's not awkward at all since you're sitting next to each other. <laughs> I do have very close friends that were that I made through work. But I think that those... <laughs> I think those bonds kind of really strengthened only after I, I left the company. And I also think that I would rather draw a line first. Hey, I thought you don't like lines. <laughs> oh! I, uh, gonna cut. <laughs> okay, okay, I take it back. No lines. <laughs> Let's go. I prioritise the work aspect mm. more than the friendship. So, so do you consider them friends? No, eh. Yeah, not at all. But, okay, okay, no, no. Actually, how do, how do we define what okay. a friend is, you know what I mean? A heart is about to be broken here. <laughs> I think for me, I have different friends for different reasons. They may not be like the first people I would call if I want to like bury a body or something. And other things, I may confide in them about some stuff, but also because you are of a different, I guess, level or hierarchy, it might be a bit strange for you to do that. Do you feel odd? Okay, so to me, I, I feel like I have a, like a somewhat internal rule. I, I don't know how accurate it is, but we'll, we'll, we'll test it and yeah, we'll see. Yeah. If they left, the company, would you still invite them to your wedding or would they invite you to their wedding? Then to me, it's like, okay, friend. If the answer is no, then if you were to die, would they go to your funeral? And if yes, then you're probably an acquaintance and if it's no, then they're definitely not your friend. Wow, that's a lot of processes. Right. I'm trying processes to think of who help, you didn't guys. invite to your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to wrap up this segment, what do you think is the secret sauce to your work friendship right here? We are in a bit of an odd space because we are not really friends, but the things that we share are so deeply personal. And I think it's harder for us because when we spend time together, it's very difficult for us to have conversations. Because <gasps> whenever we get into very deep conversations, we'll go, hold on, save it for the show. Yes, yes, yeah. We've, we've tried to reenact it on the show. Like a conversation that we've had at lunch that we thought was funny, right? <laughs> so we tried to bring it to do on the show and then it falls flat. Terrible. I actually found this trend on TikTok now called catch up friendship. So it's like, there will be that group of friends that you have that you don't meet up to have shared experiences. Mm. You meet up to kind of like just update each other on your own life. Okay, and I so think low like, maintenance friendships. No, that's the label that they hide behind. Oh, oh. Okay, 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 okay. The whole point is that we don't really spend time outside of it so that when we come together, mm. then we are able to perform in that way and have those conversations in that way. But I do think that it's odd because like, for example, I know what my boss does in the bedroom. Like, right, so a, the thing is, we we there. are open books yeah. in our line of work. Exactly. Right? Does that, just on a side note, does that make you feel extremely vulnerable? Honestly, sometimes don't you think it's easier to share more personal things with people that you aren't as close with? Like say, for example, if I go and take taxi today, right, the Grab uncle asked me anything, or I think I'll answer everything. For real? <laughs> no, because I'm never going to meet this guy again. Whatever the heck he thinks of me, right, will end when the ride ends, which is maximum maybe 30 minutes. I do the Singapore. opposite, you know. Like yeah. whenever taxi drivers or, or, or private hire drivers ask me questions, I pretend I'm someone else. <laughs> I'll give like a different fake persona, name, name. different... Yeah, 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 yeah. anybody. Exactly. What do you do for work then? Ooh, sometimes <laughs> I, I like, oh, I can't say too much. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the one I like the most. And then the next time you long, they see you on YouTube. Hey, it is the guy! <laughs> like... <laughs> Okay, we actually asked our audience uh, the same question about the secret sauce to friendship and um, an answer that just came in is, it is important not to compare yourself with your friends. It could cause friendships to sour because they might be jealous of each other's success. It depends on the person and how you internalise that, that pressure because I think sometimes seeing that competition could be quite positive, especially because I was initially host and then after that like I wasn't. I really just show up and then just talk. Uh, and sometimes I feel like I, I do less than all. I do, I do, do less. Than all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the self awareness. So I feel like every time I appear on set, I need to I need to bring up my game just so that I don't feel like I'm coasting. I mean, given the nature of social media and I kind of thing, like we are now more so than ever able to compare ourselves. But only recently have I started to really just focus on comparing myself with who I used to be. And then that is just what I want to focus on. Whenever we make progress, right, our expectation of ourselves does not, how say it, does not string. So for example, I said, I think I can be here. But then what I don't realise is that as I'm stepping forward, right, my expectations for myself and what I can be doing is also moving forward. So that it really takes that looking back, right, to realise how far you have come. Because if not, it's moving like this and you don't realise how much you've actually progressed. Like, this is why people sometimes are never happy with themselves. Because as you go along, your goalpost keeps shifting on mm. like what the definition of success is. So maybe we'll get into that as well. 
Do you feel like now that you're fronting this really successful show, that you are successful? I do think that we do recognise the success in terms of building the foundation of what we want to do. Especially for 2024 as well, the, the plans that we have for the show. We have somewhere we want to get to and we are not there yet. So in that sense, perhaps we are not successful yet. And I think something that has maybe shifted the goalposts almost of what we could possibly do in the, with the successes, I think has been the recent amount of guests that we've been able to get. We didn't realise that we could even get to, to a level where someone like Jessica Jung or like Gary Neville or Michael Owen or Peter Schmeichel want to come on our show. And so then now it's like, wait a minute, can we get even better than that or like higher than that or more famous than that. I think I've also realised that why calling ourselves successful people is a bit odd is because we didn't start out the show with the intention of say like becoming an influencer yeah. or making ourselves famous. I definitely see where you're coming from because I read this somewhere, you know, when you focus too much on like, okay, I'm going to create an award-winning show. I'm going to create a show that is going to win something at the film festivals or whatever. And if you take too long to get there, you start to become disappointed and you're like, oh, I didn't create an award-winning show. But when you purely build it from scratch and you enjoy and you love what you do and it somehow becomes something awesome, then that feels rewarding to you. I think success for us doesn't come so much in the views and subscribers, but I think more so when it comes to achieving the purpose that we are striving to. If like a particular episode, what we are trying to achieve is to help people understand more about a certain topic and we are able to do that, then to me that particular episode was successful. We'll just wrap it up with this. On a personal note, this has not got to do with work or views or your show whatsoever. On a personal note, okay? What is success to you right now? Oh, it's going to sound so lame, but I think it's just feeling really content and happy with, with the current situation that I'm in. I think for a long time in my life, I've always been chasing more and more and more. Now it's time to prioritise everything that isn't about me, it's about someone else, um, which is my kids. So I think it's really about being happy in the moment. I think that's not cheesy at all because for a lot of us, right, we're still struggling to find the ability to be content with where we are. Every year that goes by, people are like, oh, what are your goals? What are, what are you going to do this year? Like, what's your next big thing? Then I get stressed thinking about that. Like, must I always do, like, the next big thing for people to think that I'm successful? But then you define it yourself, right? So, actually, that's quite aspirational, I would say. What is success to me in every moment is whether or not I have walked a journey with the Lord. In the work that I am doing, like, how do I see the Lord in what I am doing? And perhaps, like, the message that I'm putting out, right? How is that helping someone else build their relationship with God? Yeah, and I think I have constantly been able to see that happen for myself, praise God. I admire that, I agree as well, because we're in a line where our work serves others in a way. Yeah, I think success for me looks like trying to be as honest as possible with myself. As you grow up, right, there's so many layers that are placed on you, expectations, um, uh, beliefs and all this kind of stuff, right, that kind of cloud who you are. And as you get older, you have to kind of peel this away to realise like what you really want, who you really are, and then come to terms with that. And then only from there, I, can, I think you can evolve and you can find a little bit more of like meaning and purpose and that kind of stuff. I think it was great answers. Let's give them a big round of applause for that. Thank you for shedding light. <laughs> and all very different answers too. So I'm really, really impressed. Okay, are you ready for your special drink now? Yes. Very. So what's going to happen is I'm going to make one mocktail because I think everyone's driving here today. I saw that they actually have ketchup. Eh. Oh, <laughs> I would be scared. Of course, why? Well, if you can wow. make that work, I'll be impressed. It might be a little bit of a challenge because actually I wanted to make a Bloody Mary. Ooh. Like a virgin Bloody Mary. But we don't have tomato juice, so I'm just going to use tomato ketchup. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Is that something you might explore? Where's yes. the nearest dustbin? Um, there you <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're going to put orange juice first. Yeah, so this orange is very pulpy because you're full of content. So it's full oh. of pulp, you know? So then, <laughs> we're going to have a little bit of sauce. Because you guys are saucy, right? Yeah. You always spill, spill the sauce, everything. Ready? Okay, tell me when to stop, audience. Ready? They're never going to tell you. Go! Oi! <laughs> Okay, one. okay, all good. Thank you for your help, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks. Hey, man, they're on our side. <laughs> okay, ready, let's go. Oh my god, I feel it. Whoa, it's good. What? <laughs> the bloody Mary. The, the bloody thing Mary. I got to come out. Your mixing face is really a, a new look. <laughs> okay, 
I think we're good. So we're gonna put in some ice right now. Is this bar free? It's free. I think I have to pay you to drink my drinks. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> a little spritz of this, because all of you got like great personalities, you know. So we're gonna add a little bit of that zest in. Okay. Ooh. Actually, it looks not too bad. It looks That's, fantastic. It say <laughs> only. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna add some lemon. Mainly, it's to disinfect the cup because I don't know how long these cups have been here. Thank you for thank you. Yes, you're most welcome. That looks very professional. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm legit excited. Okay. Me too. Thank you. Okay, you're most welcome. We yeah. one shot down the whole thing. Huh? No! <laughs> Cheers. 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 Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. To an MC on Monday. Not nice, man. Okay. It's great. I think they look like they're enjoying it. Can we give them a round of applause? I, I really appreciate you guys coming all the way down here today, spending time with us. And I also can't wait for like our respective episodes to come out on each other's channels. So yes. thank you for that. So audience, thank you so much for joining us thank here today. You. And if you're watching this right now, if you enjoyed it, please remember to like, share and subscribe. And leave a comment and let them know who would you like on the show. Also, if you would like to join as a live audience, there is a link down below that you can go to join us. Yeah, <laughs> yes, thanks for having us. You're most welcome. Cheers. What's wrong with your drink? Uh, give, yeah, no, it's good. I, I want to let them try also. Oh! Oh! Okay, yeah. bye! <laughs> Please don't drink it. I can't believe you guys drank it. What's going on? <laughs> guys, why are you actually drinking it? Oh my god! Stop! There's no work for the next two days. What is can... going on? I'm shook. Oh, there's a fly. Oh my god, it's the fly from episode 1. It never left. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It Hello. never left. Hello. What's happening? We need to give Hello. it a name already. <laughs>